everybody, welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be five minutes. Today in the news, if you're having a hard time getting Starfield to work on your PC, well, Todd Howard has some words for you. In a recent interview with Bloomberg Technology, Ed Ludlow asked Howard, why did you not optimize this game for PC? Uh, we did, says Howard, as Phil Spencer fails to suppress a chuckle. It's running great. It is a next-gen PC game. We really do push the technology, so you may need to upgrade your PC for this game. But it's got a lot of great stuff going on in it, and fans are responding awesome. But despite what they say, for some people out there, it's not working that great. As reported by Kotaku, some fans are responding annoyed. The game is not optimized at all, declares another popular comment on Twitter. My 4090 can't even reach 60 FPS with so many zones, and it crashes every time with DLSS 3 frame generation mod. And that mod is no joke. Right now, the most popular mod for Starfield isn't the inventory UI improvement or the one that turns Vasco into Thomas the Tank Engine, but the Starfield Upscaler, which replaces in-game FSR2 with DLSS XESS. This is in part due to Starfield working with AMD and leaving a lot of NVIDIA users feeling like they're left floating in space. But again, that brings us back to the confidence with which Howard said it's optimized. PCs range from whatever build to whatever build, and to say it's optimized, and if it's not for you to get a new PC is like, you know that's gonna piss people off. Like, you just know people on the internet are gonna be upset by that. Like, just when it comes out your mouth, you should know that. I think IGN put it simply and plainly by saying, no game runs flawlessly on all PC configurations. But thankfully, so far, the Starfield community is, is pretty good about helping other people find what tweaks and things to do with their PC to get it to work right. And so, uh, shout out to them, as usual, the community in Bethesda games is really what makes these things work, and so uh, they're still doing it, still to this day. In other news in the world of games and media, it looks like we're gonna get a brand new video game adaptation for the game Stray. That's right, my favorite cat game that I've ever played with my mother. <laughs> You can go watch the whole thing over on Cox Clips. It was an absolute joy. This game is getting an animation adaptation from Annapurna. That's right, of course, it would be Annapurna. It makes perfect sense. Right now, no director, no writer, no nothing. There's strikes going on, but it looks like a deal is signed to make it happen whenever they can. Robert Baird, former Disney animation executive and now one of the heads of Annapurna Animation said, it's a buddy comedy about a cat and a robot and there's such a hilarious dynamic. So there's comedy inherent in this, but there's not one human being in this movie. I think it's one of the reasons why the game was so incredibly popular, that you are seeing the world through the point of view of an adorable cat. How do they pull that off? And how are we going to pull that off in the movie? We will, even though sometimes it feels impossible, but we know that's the essence of the game and the key to telling the story. And that's fine and all, but the key to making this work right is figuring out what makes a game work versus what would make an animated movie work, right? Are you just gonna retell the story? Are you going to give people something different than the game would have? When you play the game of Stray, what makes it fun isn't the dynamic between the robots and the cat. That's cool. It adds to it its flavor, but what makes it fun is you are a cat exploring and you're doing crazy cat things and you're going around being a cat in a robot world, avoiding sure baddies and whatever and hanging out with robots and experiencing that. But you're also just like knocking stuff over and sleeping and listening to music and running around and snooping, things that you're doing, right? It's why a large majority of video game adaptations just don't work. And the ones that do really stand out, that's for sure, but there's so many that fail because they don't recognize the key point of what makes playing a game different versus what makes watching a thing. One is active and can be eight, 10 hours, and, and one is passive and is like two. So, I feel like this should be something Hollywood knows, but my God, they just don't. This is strangely a subject that I talk with Crendor about all the time. He hates games with a lot of story. He does not like them. He has complained numerous times about things, even like God of War. He's like, the first hour was a movie. I was bored and I'm enthralled by it. You know what I mean? So what would he say? Well, he definitely isn't gonna explain that because <laughs> it's time for your Cren Minute. Hello everybody, how's it going? It's me, Crendor, and welcome back to the Cren Minute, my once a week segment where I have to talk about whatever I want for a minute. Today, I'm talking about bread ties. <laughs> because I was I was getting a bagel, 
and they got that little bread tie thing on it, right? The little plastic thing, and it like holds it all together. But I never reuse those, and I'm like, who reuses these? Who takes the thing out and then like does the whole thing and then like reuses the bag tie? Usually, I just twist it and I put it under, and then I lay the the bread on top of the bread tie thing, right? Or if it's got the twisty tie, I do the same thing. I throw it away and then I just spin it around and do that. Like, I don't know. And that just works for me. Are there people that actually use the bread tie? I'm curious. How many people use bread ties or like what is your bread resealment measure? I don't know what you're doing. Uh, so let me know in the comments section. Also, go check out the YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast. Best worst podcast on the Internet. So yeah. Thanks again, Crendor. All right, that is it for me. Obviously, I'm going to push patreon.com slash Jesse Cox here. It helps make this whole show work. And I'll see you all Monday for another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News.